Tri-City Sports Now is happy to give you the president of the Appalachian League, who has been there since as long as I can remember, a generation at the helm of the Appalachian League, uh, which has been around since 1911. Lee Landers hasn't been around that long. He may feel like he has and all that, but he's very adept. One thing uh, is putting together schedules for many different leagues around uh, minor league baseball uh, with a lot of questions going around the future of franchises, this sort of thing in the Appy League. We're happy to have him on. Uh, Lee Landers, let me just ask you right off its opening day. I know you came up from Florida for the action. Where are you, uh, where are you joining us from today? I'm in Johnson City. Uh, they won the pennant last year, and I, I think they're going to do a trophy presentation and some things. And then, uh, you know, looking outside, uh, I'm glad they got the new field that drains really well with the synthetic turf. And tomorrow I'll be in Elizabethan, Greenville on Saturday, Bristol Sunday and Monday, Tuesday for a day game in uh, Kingsport and a night game over in Danville and then back to Pulaski for two. Well, your thoughts about this season coming up. I know that uh, the players are, you know, they're all last-minute additions to the roster, so you can't give me any picks on who you think will probably win the pennant or anything like that. But the <laughs> upcut, well, no, but when you look at this season, just uh, and you think about where the Appalachian League was when you took over and where it is now, what improvements do you see uh, in the league? Well, the big thing is uh, everybody's improved their facilities marking it uh that, that's a big thing this improvement and and that's also the thing that uh could cost uh some municipalities their their ball clubs uh they have to keep up uh, with facility standards as dictated uh really by major league baseball to to minor league baseball to get their parks in shape and you can look at all the new ballparks around the united states in the last 10 years, and you can see what the adjustments are. We used to just go to the ballpark, uh, and all there was was a ball game. Uh, well, a family of four or five, there's only one person that probably uh, was a baseball fan. And now with the ad entertainment, you know, here in Johnson City, they have the deck, they have a party deck, they have a picnic pavilion, they have inflatables for the kids, uh, and, and most of our clubs do that right now. So it's fun for the whole family, and if we're doing our job right, uh, when that family goes home, they've had a good time, and it's uh, really immaterial who won and who lost. I know a lot of minor league baseball publicity, it is that it's the event, you know. I mean, there's been times where they go uh, to games and they ask the people at the game, hey, who's winning? And they can't really even say. It's about being out uh, in Johnson City, as you mentioned, they have the deck. It's about the kids getting an autograph or, you know, meeting with the mascot or having uh, some popcorn, that sort of thing, listening to music. You know, the, the game sometimes can be secondary. But do you think that's a healthy thing, Lee Landers? Definitely. Definitely. Especially at this level. Uh, like I say, we're in small municipalities. Uh, we have a lot of competition. Uh, the biggest competition is getting people off the couch to go to, to get them out. And if they go out and only one person enjoys the time that they spent out, it's going to be tough to get the other four off the couch somewhere down the road. Where if everybody has a good time, Marky, then you have a lot better chance. Somebody doesn't want to cook tonight. Somebody wants to go because it's bobblehead night. Somebody wants to go because their friends are gone and they can play on the inflatables. Uh, and oh, yes, that person that's a real baseball fan uh got a chance to go rather than watch somebody's tv show well we're talking to lee landers who's the president of the appalachian league and i'm only a few seconds away from a hard break but i do want to ask a time to ask you how long have you been the president of the appalachian league i remember 20 years ago calling play-by-play -play for the johnson city cardinals and you were entrenched then when did you start uh, this role with the appy league in 1996, so I guess that's, what, 22 years ago. And that's after 30 years with the Cardinal organization. So, Okay, what did you do with the Cardinals? Well, I, I started out as an athletic trainer and was in AAA as the trainer and traveling secretary uh, and then uh, moved into the front office and uh, was a general manager in the minor league system. But we'll talk about that and most of the most of the time in Springfield. 
We'll talk a little bit about that and more if you can stay with us. Lee Landers, president of the Appalachian League on Tri-City Sports Now. Start your day with the Rick and Bubba Show, weekdays 7 to 9 on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. No sleep till Brooklyn, where they are counting down to tonight's NBA draft. 7 p.m. Eastern at the Barclays Center, Philadelphia. Now with the number one pick, expected to select Markel Fultz. With the second pick, the Lakers, who are still talking to the Pacers about a possible trade for Paul George, are expected to go with UCLA star Lonzo Ball. And the Celtics at number three are reportedly... 20 NBC Sports Radio... Okay, Tri-City Sports Now with me, Marky Bilson, and one of my favorite guests, really, Lee Landers. I love baseball people. We're talking off the air about old baseball stories, my opposition to franchise relocation because of my romanticism, and you know, he's telling me about the practicality. But let, let's talk about what's going on in the Appalachian League. And I guess, you know, there are a couple of franchises that have precarious stadium situations, although uh, there is an article in the Elizabethan Star today. You can read about it in Elizabethan.com about the Elizabethan Twins officially uh, touching base and uh, some talks now with the Twins. What is the status right now of the Elizabethan Twins franchise, Lee Landers? They're still in negotiation, you know. Uh, as I've said to, to both sides, uh, there was, you know, this should have been, if it was going to get done, it should have been done a long time ago. And there's enough blame to, to go around for, for both sides. Uh, we put a deadline on it that uh, we have to we have to know what's going on, and and there was a lack of communication originally, and then some feelings got hurt, and and then there was um, uh, there was some other uncertainties, uh, but it uh, you know I've told both sides it's time to get over it, you know let's let's get a solution, the blame game, that's over with, let's find a solution. And if one side or the other doesn't doesn't want the other one, tell us that too, so we can get on with it. Have you have, to have something done in the clubhouses in Elizabeth? No ifs, ands, and buts. That has to be done. The visitors' clubhouse, the home clubhouse, and especially the umpires' room. Uh, the umpires' room is no bigger than uh, a bathroom in a hotel room. Mm. That has to be done. <laughs> and there were some thoughts. Well, the twins want to leave. We'll get another club here. No, that's not going to happen until that gets done. Um, uh, but I think they're they're both back on the same page now. Uh, sometimes you find uh, the grass isn't really greener at the other side of the fence, uh, and and they're back in some serious discussions now. There was a credibility issue at first that uh, again, let's get over it. When you say credibility issue, I mean what? Can you elaborate a little bit? Well, phone calls were supposed to be made, made and, and, and said they were going to be made at a certain time and weren't being made. Uh, and Minnesota really got upset about that. Um, little things upset you more than a big thing sometimes. And we spun, spun our wheels. Um, and it really came to a head at the baseball winter meetings in uh, National Harbor in, in uh, early December. And uh, again, we were we were told that the city was uh, going to contact uh, the president of the Minnesota Twins, and they were going to have a sit down. And that didn't take that took a long time to get to come to fruition. So something that that should have been cut and dry uh, mid July to early August last year is still spinning out there. Well, Lee Landers, president of the Appalachian League, how important? is Elizabeth then to the Appalachian League? Well, they have a long history in the Appalachian League, and and, and 
You know, if if we were starting a league right now, as you know, those territorial issues were grandfathered in. Uh, we couldn't have all the clubs clustered. I think at some point in time down the road, uh, you know, we're going to have to look at those things because uh, as prices escalate, uh, and you can only market in a in, in a little percentage of what your total market could have been, we're going to have to look at some things. So. Elizabethan is very important to it. It has a long history. There's great people there as far as player development. Uh, the fans, the the uh, host families, you couldn't ask for a better scenario uh, for your players to go in that the host families take care of. And they treat them as their own sons. That part is outstanding. But in today's market, uh, facilities have to be kept up. And when you spend most of your time in the clubhouses, uh, you know, from early workouts on, and uh, they, they just don't meet facility standards right now as dictated by Major League Baseball. That's nothing that we can do anything about. That That's something that has to be done. Uh, you've seen the improvements at Johnson City. I think the bar was raised when Greenville came into the league. Bristol looks like the, they're well on the way to getting a brand new ballpark. Uh, a lot of improvements uh, the New York Mets have, have done uh, since they took over the operation of the Kingsport facility. You've seen all the uh, all the changes over there. Uh, they have a good rapport with the city. Uh, Mr. Judd and his crew, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, are doing an amazing job there. Uh, Pulaski. Uh, you've heard all the horror stories about Pulaski. If you haven't been up in Pulaski in the last three years, I never thought that I would see a Jumbotron scoreboard in the Appy League, oh. have, let alone in Pulaski. It's it's a beautiful park to go to, and it was always, you know, it's on a historic reg- register. It's, uh, it's a great place to go. The Braves in Danville have done a tremendous job. Uh, an old ballpark that used to be in Danville, and uh, they – put it up like a rector set and put it in a warehouse. And when they needed a new ballpark in Burlington years ago, somebody remembered there was a ballpark in a warehouse at, in Danville, and that's uh, the Burlington ballpark now. And they've done an amazing job. They have new clubhouses for both the home team and the visitors. They have a party pavilion. Uh, they've redone the front entrance. Um, I mean, it's they've done a, a tremendous job. Um, but we need to keep up with time, so to speak. Well, you mentioned uh, a new ballpark in Bristol. Over six months ago, Steve Johnson announced a phase two to include a sports and entertainment complex at at the Pinnacle. Can you confirm that's going to be a minor league baseball facility for the Pirates? I can can confirm they're looking at it uh, at my desk in Florida and have the perspective of it. Uh, they, they're doing it the right way. Uh, a lot of times the municipalities fall in, a, fall in a trap that they build ballparks with their own people, and you, you save a lot of money and get a better facility when you, when you go to somebody that that's what they do for a living. They're dealing with, uh, with Populous, which is HOK, Bruce Miller, and that bunch. Uh, the, their con- consulting firm that comes in and, and – uh, you know, ask all the questions and see if it would work and the dynamics. They've already that's already been done. That's already that's already that book has already been done. Uh, they're well on their way, and um, and I would think that they're they're close to a yes or no now. When do you think we might know uh, more about what's going on at the Pinnacle? Well, I I'll, I'll be in Bristol Saturday or Sunday and Monday, and I'll find out there. We'll stay but in I, touch, Mr. O'Connor from the. Uh, uh, the president of, my, of all minor league baseball and I and myself met with uh, with the chamber of commerces of both uh, Virginia and, ten, and excuse me, both Bristol's last year with their economic development people. Uh, we had a a great meeting. Um, I thought it was it went very well, and uh, you now we sat back and then we'll see how long it takes to see what they're doing and it. Uh, uh, all that was done and accomplished uh, well before in my own mind that I thought the timetable would be. Now, you mentioned earlier about five teams being so close together in the Tri-Cities, and you say you've got to look at that in the future. 
Uh, Sevierville has been talked about, some talk about the Smokies maybe moving back to Knoxville, and that leaves a beautiful ballpark in Sevierville that a lot of people have said uh, could be prime real estate for the Appalachian League. Uh, what about this? Are the Smokies going to head to Knoxville, in your opinion, and then this will be a, a, a new ballpark? Well, you, you would have to talk to Randy Boyd and Boyd Sports about that. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, now that he's running for governor, I <laughs> don't know if that's something that he even w- w- would entertain thoughts of right mm-hmm. now. And I honestly don't know. We had a, we had the Appalachian League meeting down there uh uh, a month or so ago, uh, and they they hosted it, and that subject had never came up, uh, and I I don't like to to speculate on hypotheticals, Marky. You know me better than that, and uh, uh, let somebody else uh, make those announcements. Uh, it goes without saying. There's a beautiful ballpark there, and, and somebody wanted somebody to go in there. You you certainly uh, would say we have no interest, but. Uh, I I haven't heard anything that, that, that they were even planning on that. And I think, I mean, I know they have a long-term lease there. And in their lease, it just doesn't say that they will provide a professional baseball club. It says uh, a double-A Southern League club. So you, you have a lot of legalities are hurdle, even if they wanted to do something. Well, let's talk uh, one final thing on franchises. Are there any cities, not speculating, but any cities that are dying to get into the Appalachian League that you know of? I mean, there used to be teams in Withville, Marion, Paintsville, Huntington. Are any old cities? Well, again, uh, yeah. again, again, some of those cities that that are, are close like that, Marion was a great place. Uh, but again, you're not helping yourself. They're so close to Bristol. Uh, Bristol draws from from Marion. Uh, Chulaski draws from Wistful, uh, as does Bluefield. So if you're looking long range that our clubs uh, need more territory to, to cultivate for sponsorship, for advertising, for group sales and those types of things, you're not helping yourself if you're so narrow that you're only talking 20 miles down the road. So you want the your plan would be to expand the footprint of the Appalachian League if there's going to yes. be okay all right well, let's go on to the uh, baseball here and all this uh, I know that a lot of uh, teams have small pitch counts uh, relatively speaking to say the major leagues in terms of what their uh, starting pitchers can go say 75 80 pitches is there still the five inning rule a starting pitcher must go five in the Appalachian League to get a victory. Now that's a baseball rule, not just Appalachian League rule. I, I know that. I also know that uh, I did some things in a showcase league in the uh, Arizona Winter League, and they just waived that. You know, they had p- starting pitchers going three, so on. So that's that's going to stay. They, they, you got to go five as a starter to get the victory. I get that. Okay. Uh, I know the Gulf Coast League, or we've talked about some of the, the rookie leagues uh, beneath the Appalachian League. When they go to a certain part and extra innings, are now going to put a runner on second base to try to uh, get an ending to the game, much like uh, they're, some they're softball. They're doing that. It's a pace of game that the, that the commissioner of baseball, uh, he's made that a priority. Uh, they're starting it uh, in the 10th inning, uh, put a runner on second base. Uh so you don't – their whole thing is the pace of game, so you don't have six innings ball games. They could have done their homework a little better because Dan Mushan and the American League, the American Association, uh, they've been doing that. And they started in the in, you know, 11th inning, so you have one extra inning, then you go to the 11th inning. It's just the pace of the game. And I think he, he told me that, that they had uh, like 17 extra inning games of those 17, seven of them were over in the eighth inning, uh, and then six more were over in the eleventh inning. So it really, you know, there, how often do you have a 16 inning ball game? Mm-hmm. And where it really, where it really hurts is when you had a 16 inning ball game tonight, and then you travel and you have a doubleheader tomorrow. Uh, that's why we try to get all our games started because there is a rule that says you can only want to do it conventionally uh if they would have started it in the 12th inning 
it would have shifted the, the majority rule that, that, that they would like to try it. But since uh, baseball said no, you started in the 10th inning, they voted it down. The only pace of the game rule that was adopted uh, by anything above the Gulf Coast and the uh, Arizona Rookie League, not the Fall League, is the intentional walk, that if a manager wants to intentionally walk somebody, you can let the umpire know and you can put them on first base. Just like now, in the majors, yeah. The technicality on that is the, de- the defensive team, uh, the manager might have somebody warming up in the bullpen and he wants his uh, pitcher to have more warm-up throws. Well, then he doesn't have to just tell him to go to first base. He can go ahead and take his time and walk him like they do now intentionally and get his uh, pitcher more time to warm up in the bullpen. I went over that and uh, brought that up at the umpires meeting yesterday, and it uh, like deer in the headlights, I hadn't thought of that. So, Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, some more time. The opposing manager, in other words, not the team that's on the field playing defense, the team with the pitcher, but the team batting could say, no, we want you to throw four pitches to us. No, the other oh, way around. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So they could go and. No, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. He, the defense would, uh, yeah, they want to intentionally walk him. Now, you're right that, that, that he doesn't he doesn't have to say, okay, go on to first base. Uh, the defense can have their pitcher rather than just putting him on, intentionally walking him like they, like they do now. Yeah, it would. That you're right. It would be the choice of the defense to do that. I see. I see. Okay, We're talking to Lee Landers, president of the Appalachian League. I, I, I do want to ask you about the uh, runner on base rule, though. Uh, Tim Kirchin, and I'm going to talk about this later on in the show, uh, did a piece on ESPN.com talking about the blueprint of baseball, speculating what uh, how it might change in the next 20 years. And he said he thought that that runner on base rule would come to the major leagues eventually. Do you think that that's going to come to the Appalachian League or higher levels eventually? Or is it a fad like Charles Finley's Orange Baseball? Uh, there's a good chance as it will because the commissioner really wants to work with the pace of the game. I think that if it if it comes, they'll be better, they'll have a better chance of adoption if they would start that in the 11th and or 12th inning, like the international rule is, uh, rather than the 10th inning. Of course, there's my old thing that you know you could then have extra inning marathon games with one one innings instead of zero zero innings this way, and frankly, you know, pacing sort of the length of game. I'm not sure if it's the pacing that uh, would be you know affected here. Hey, we've been talking to Lee Landers, president of the Appalachian League. He's going to be in Johnson City giving the Cardinals their championship trophy. Uh, anything? What's your favorite promotion that you've heard of this year for an Appalachian League team? What do you think is really creative and new? Well, they're, they're, you take fireworks out of the equation, which is always the best one. Bobbleheads are kind of running their course, and we'll, we'll have some come up. I can't pick any one out right now because I haven't seen how they're, how successful it's going to be yet. Um, uh, we have some young people that are that are really into that this year, and I think it'll work. Tyler Parsons here in Johnson City has got some creative ideas. Uh, Elsie Thompson, who's really running the Greenville Club right now, uh, and then on the other side, uh, you know, Chulaski, Burlington, and Danville are coming up with some great things to do. There's no chance of a hip hop demolition night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael Vick won't let us do that. Oh my goodness, I've got to I've got to call him up and uh, find out. I think that would be a fantastic promotion, especially around here. Hey, it's Lee Landers. He's the president of the Appalachian League, and you know that he knows baseball. Thank you for joining me here. I look forward to talking to you again, of course, and always. And uh, it's always a great pleasure. And most of all, it's great information, Lee Landers, about the Appalachian League. Hey, when we come back, let me tell you about that story about Tim Kirkchen, the blueprint of baseball. How could it change by 2037? We got ACC schedules made out until that year. Why not look at the baseball? Tri-City Sports now. Did you know?